Hello and welcome back to episode 8 of the Stories of the Savage Lands featuring the Fortress of Golf Cobalt. It's a great day to be around here and the last time we have set up the beautiful foundation of this little castle to be. There's still a lot of work to do and we're going to get started with that today. So I came up with the idea after finishing all of this build up here that I really don't like that our enemies will have such a terribly easy way of getting into our civilian areas. I mean, all this here, it, it's fine and dandy, I don't like it, but it's still way too easy for our enemies to breach our defenses. So I came up with that nifty little idea. We're just going to go for another little bridge here. So I'm going to build one here and I'm going to link it to this lever here and we're going to start and build an alternative way into the fortress, you know? So we're, we're definitely going to start a real trap parkour now. So basically what we got there is going to be our emergency defense for things like snatchers and the like. Things that we just don't see coming that fast. So this kind of defense will be quite okay. So what kind of artifact was that again? A horse bone grate? Cool. I mean, it's a uh, unbreakable grate. It's uh, also made out of horse bone, which is uh, disturbingly fitting for this place. You know, we have that uh, suicide cult going. The, uh, the fatal abbey is, uh, is going great. And we're going to set on up a new temple right over there. And this will belong... Oh, wait a sec. The Snarling Sanctum? Dedicated to Golgon. Now, I wanted to dedicate this temple here to a specific other thing. Temple, temple. And that's the Fellowship of Ashes, which is basically the organized religion of Vukar, the death and suicide god. So, as you look there, these people, they don't really like other gods too much. But there is a, there is a, a, a glimmer of hope. <laughs> There's a love god. This is getting weirder and weirder. So, the Lustful Cult, oh my god. So, what was Golgon again? So, we were worshipping the knight, no, 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 no. What's Golgon standing for again? Where are you, Golgon? Are you hiding? Wait a sec, here, Golgon, Muck. The Lustful Cult worships a god of Muck. I'm not asking any further questions, okay? I'll just leave it as it is here. The Creed of Tweeting. All right, so enough of that, the Fellowship of Ashes it'll be. And we're going to make sure that their abode is going to look nice and dandy as well. And let's see, do we have an altar for them already? I don't know. I think we had a excessive production of altars. Yeah, 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 I remember the other day. But not now, because I want to keep, um, I want to get the smoothing done first. Okay, so let's get back upstairs. I have two thoughts for that. First off, I want to create another another trap environment, but there's another thought of mine. I figured that I want to check out the higher layers of of the of the ground because I'm quite desperate finding stuff. I have only found so far tin, gold. I think there was a little bit of platinum. No was silver. There was a, at least really not much metal going around here, and I'm objectively sad about that, you know? So uh, we're, we're going to go with our pathing, in a way, that our entire little thing that we're building will ultimately converge, like, into this little thing here. So basically, I imagine that we're going to have an entry that will go over here for something like that. So this way we will amp up the, uh, the, the power of this thing by, by I don't know how much. So the exploratory thing, I figured I'm going to do that from the, um, from the merchant's post. Because I figured that this uh, would be a nice place. Sometimes you have a rock there, okay? Sometimes you also just hit the aquifer sooner. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so uh, our, our mining jobs got cancelled. That's because we 
we struck damp walls. All right, so we're going to go south. Let's see. With a narrow corridor here. And now we can talk business, you know, we could do all manner of evil things here, but for, for starters, well, let's just, uh, let's just relay that a little bit further and let them go a little bit around the place, you know, there's plenty of fun to go around. Maybe I'm going to expand that thing here as well. I don't know yet. So the upper layers are very, very quickly cleared. So there's really no issue to that. And this whole exploratory thing that I'm doing here is not connected to my to the rest of my um, my city. This is autonomous. This is just linked to the trader's hub. So it doesn't hurt wherever we uh, dig around. It doesn't hurt our infrastructure at all paying close attention to these things nowadays more than before so now we're going to go yeah let's do this i like the idea of that let's just do a a nice little um snail circle you know there we go something very very classy i don't think we're going to find too much here so, except for the fact that this seems to be, there seems to be a aquifer around in that area, but it isn't too surprising when we got water right upstairs. So, it all just, just makes terribly much sense. Okay, so it doesn't seem like I'm getting lucky here on this level. So, I'm just digging these out in the hope that we're hitting any type of rock layer in between, but the chances are growing slimmer and slimmer. Okay, so next step, we're going to hit a aquifer layer, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, what happened down here? Not much so far. Okay, so this can be littered with tons of rockfall traps, because obviously we don't have anything else than stonefall traps although i have seen a really really nice thing that you can do with these traps um going to implement that on another level here we're just going to go for the slammies just uh, straightforward rock fall traps very very easy so let's see how many we can build of that this is going to be a very cheesy defense but on the other hand since we don't seem to have any access to coal in a larger in a larger sense, I think it is terribly necessary, you know. Yo dude, why do you cancel your job? Man, so sad with dwarfs just canceling their job when you give them a new one. Alright, there's uh, stuff growing everywhere here. And well, so the trick is we need to connect this whole thing up to the rest of the fortress. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So here we have struck black sand. Man, I love black sand. It's uh, very, very fancy stuff. So we got to re uh, replace these walls because we can't smooth them. And we got to dig deeper so we can breach the aquifer layer. So, I feel like I need more miners here, say. I have three miners, but one of them is a is the chief medical dwarf. Really need to change that. This is no this is no good. I don't know if I have enough picks for that, but I'm going to die trying. <laughs> okay. So the traveling times to this uh, work site are pretty uh, long, but on the plus, I mean, it's a uh, it's a light aquifer. They they don't fill with water that terribly fast. Okay, so we got that. Next step, seal it off with walls, because we got to. Oh, wait a sec. We're not going to go for the use closest material thing again. This was nice for the traps, but not for this. So I want to make sure that we're using... Look, it would have been a gold bar wall, because that was the closest material. Are you guys insane? 
So here we are breaching the aquifer with a fine lacing of gold wall. Damn. Dwarves, man. Don't pay attention to their uh, to them goofballing around for a for a break of a minute. And they're doing lots of weird stuff. So here, okay, these rock salt chunks, they at least make sense, you know. But I don't want them. We're cutting blocks for a reason. And here we are already through with that whole thing. So we can now go again downstairs. And I definitely, totally want to do a drowning chamber this time. I I want to do this so badly because it's just such a power move when you uh, when you have a, a lever which you can flick to just uh, turn on the water to drown your sorrows away. I like that, you know? This is, a, uh, this is a clean and powerful solution to everything which can still breathe. Or needs to breathe, I should rather say. Okay, so that worked out really nicely so far. We're going to pack that thing up with traps, but... Uh, so this layer here that we're entering now is going to be the layer for the really, really, really pesky guests, you know? The ones that made it into the bonus area because they didn't get slammed by all those rocks. So here we're going to have to work on something premium, but for now we're going to work with freemium because, you know, it's going to be enough work for our dudes here to fill this whole thing up. So until then, we're just going to go for the cheap way, and that means we're going to connect this now to the defense layers, and uh, once we flick the switch upstairs, the enemy has to go a little bit of a detour, and by the end of the detour, they'll get to see even more rock traps, you know? That's what we got in this fortress. Stones. We got a lot of stones, so don't mess with our stones. Literally, the best way that i found so far to go to to get a quick patch, you know? I don't know if I'm overdoing it, I don't have that much experience with the... Uh, with things like these. So, boys, who left the stink in there? How did that happen? Haulers? Ah, yeah. I, uh, I disabled the haulers for a while to get stuff done. So let's re-enable them. I don't know, it seems like it starts in the kitchen. So, um, I bet that there's a tasty rotten fish lying around there. No, rotten prepared horse lung. Mmm. So, what has happened is that nobody carried the prepared meals to the, to the stockpile fast enough. Because, funny enough, as soon as a food is stored in a stockpile, it is unperishable. Yeah, it's, it's really like that. It's all that, it's all that it needs uh, to be conserved is to lie in a stockpile. It doesn't need barrels or pots or anything like that, as far as I know. No, no, you just need that. Alrighty, look, doesn't that look nice? I really like it. I really, really do like it. And the best part about it is that we're doing so such a great... Um, we're using so much of our uh, boulders that just come around due to our everyday work. What the hell are you doing there? Why is that shortage of bins? So... Don't I have a bin job? <laughs> so, let's see. Prop crafts, hides... Did I forget the bins? Seriously? Looks like it. Now that would explain why we have... Yeah, I don't have bins yet. Oh, oh no, I do. Here. So, um... My next guess would be then that we don't have the necessary wood to work with for these. Yeah, my... Let's see, there's my stone workers. I don't have a... Well, why the hell aren't you making more bins, boys? Nah, I think this is because of a uh, hauling shortage. I'm pretty sure that this happened because of that. Okay, so damn, we really, really got to get ourselves acquainted in here in the long term, but for, for now it's going to be okay. Let's see. Oh boy, um, we got ourselves a... Um, you do that. In case you guys saw that, that was a sweet little meditation on on things that these people do here. These are such nut jobs, you know? I'm really surprised that we survived several years so far. Okay, 
So a caravan has arrived. Awesome. Can't wait to see that. So I don't think they can go. They they will come with a uh, with a wagon yet. The road isn't finished yet. We got a lot of big projects. Maybe I should just uh, let the let the dwarves do their thing for a while. You know, let them get the the roads done and whatnot. We have a lot of heavy duty jobs going on there. The caravan though is a godsend. I'm, I'm really happy about that. So let's hope that I got myself some finished good bins at least. I mean, would be a shame if we'd had none. Gem bin, no. Weapon bin, no. <laughs> Hell no. So, well, looks like we got 2,000 dwarf bucks together. Well, that ain't much. But, well, it ain't, it ain't that terrible either. So, well, we could sell those gems, but I'm... Uh, I tell you what, we're we're going to do that simply because I I really think we we could we could really use the the push of uh, of of money there, and the humans will come more often for trading there as well. And I did a little bit of a check on the world map. So strangely enough, the goblins there are at peace with us. We're only at war with the goblins of the flacked curses. The goblins of the depressed devil peace. I didn't make this up. They're, they are at peace with us. But uh, just as it is with goblins, they don't need a war to raid you. That's the wonderful thing about goblins. They just do their thing. Right on. Okay. So let's see. Until they got that stuff. Yo, broker. I hope you're done with your meal soon. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, here it goes. Trade it. Oh. Here we go. So, most likely, we're going to have access now to food. Because they, they really often come with food. Especially when you're low on drink and stuff. So, they got some expensive things here. Some expensive cages. No thanks. Barrels. So here, berry wine. I'm going to buy that. Beer barrel. Thank you. Another beer barrel. I don't need milk barrel. Thank you. So let's head on over to the weaponry. Bronze is really good. Silver would be good if it'd be a bashing weapon, but it ain't. Bronze great axe. Well, this is not our size. I think great axes can't be even used by dwarfs. Correct me if I'm wrong. Light iron breastplate, also wrong size. I wonder if this thing even usable for us? Ah, we're going to find it out. But battle axes are actually something that's uh, wearable for dwarfs. But all these large things just won't work. Iron buckler, super high quality. I'm not going to pay 1,100 dwarf bucks for that. So the human caravan has the downside of being just, um, you know, humans. Uh, selling human-sized gear, you goofballs. Anywho, I hope that they're selling some raw food stuffs as well. Look at that. We're going to buy ourselves an anvil. Why not? Um, meat. No, not fish. Plants. So I'm going to buy all these things. Backpacks. No thanks. Oh, giant bronze axe. Blade. I mean, we don't have too much material for weapon traps, so it's really going to be a good thing to buy that. Okay, so I don't even need to sell anything that I don't want to sell. Awesome. We're just going to sell one crate here, and uh, here we go. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't see that before, so they want those gems. I'm uh, I'm totally fine with that. You guys take that. I'm I'm down. So see you later, nerds. Thanks for the trade. So this wasn't as profitable as I was hoping, but uh, on the bright side, I think we're going to have some stuff to work with. And also, if ever necessary. I could transform this into a nice extra farm where we can't grow stuff that usually only grows on the surface. Okay, so let's bring up more stone fall traps, as many as we can. Can't wait to see more dwarfs popping into this fortress. <laughs> right on cue. Gotta say, you guys 
right on cue. So let's see. Do they come over the road by now? I mean, I would love if they do. Wait a sec. Double migrants? Are you kidding me? Jeez. That's going to be a bit of an issue. I mean, all right. First off, we need to place down extra furniture real quick. And, uh, whoa. I mean, if this wasn't a fluke, we're going to be pretty, uh, pretty stacked now with people. I mean, I like that. This uh, fortress has been in its preparation phase for way too long, in my humble opinion. And I'm looking forward to more shenanigans here. So we have two engravers, and they're both novices at their trade. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. But I'll let them do their thing in their own time, because I've made the experience that this is really, really worth it. If you just let them learn their craft, by the end of uh, by the end of what we're doing here, we're going to have awesome people there. But now I think the best thing we can do is uh, staff out our living areas accordingly, and make sure that we get all that hauling done that has uh, has stockpiled on us, you know. And also, I really really want to get the. Uh, the workshop area a little bit better under control. I mean, the stone area is looking really nice. I I really like what's going to uh, what's going on here already. But the uh, the wood stuff is just not working out. I mean, there's just the stuff here, and we don't even have a a, a area designated for for these yet. So we're going to do that now. So this is going to be Timber Valley for now. Just want to make sure that we finally get the get the wood out of the stockpile, you know. Okay, so far so good. I want to see how we can do that uh, drowning chamber stuff next. So we got ourselves access to a watery uh, area there. So the farmers want a guild hall. The guild of buds. <laughs> All right, you guys that's okay for me i mean it ain't the most useful build hall and i gotta say i learned a ton in the course of the last uh, time and by now i would do a lot of things differently compared to this uh, layout of the fortress but that's okay dwarf fortress is literally a game where where you have this feeling like always <laughs> I could do this better is uh, or I could have done this better is a uh, is a constant companion of yours showing you that there's always something cooler to learn in this game it really does take a while until this feeling stops I guess but this is something positive for me so we're going to slap in another altar in here and we got to take care that this guild hall gets uh, furnished out in here but this shouldn't be too much of an issue we don't have much fuel but we can transform a little bit of it into charcoal that's not the end of the world as you see there we have a few uh, units of that i'm just using my smelting very very sparingly that's just the way that we're doing it here and i think it's going to work out really really nicely also I want to work with animals this time. We have already caged ourselves the first kangaroo, and since this place is in the Savage Lands, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Giant sparrows. I hate giant uh, birds, okay? I just have a huge... Dis I despise these. Anywho, and uh, we're, we're going to work with those caged animals because I feel like in this environment, there's going to be a pretty high chance that we're going to cage ourselves exciting animals that we can use for various traps. So this place is coming together way better than I thought. And for obvious reasons, I'm too afraid of the first goblin raid, you know? It's it's looking insane what we got prepared there. And with the influx of new dwarfs there, we're going to have a lot of extra workforce. So it's all going to be fine. The next thing that we require, though, is a a water shaft 
let's call it like that. So what I want to do there is I want to use the aquifer to to fuel the mm, to fuel the the drowning chamber that I want to install here. So we're going to go. Yeah, this is great. We're going to go downstairs here. So lots of aquifer breaching here, but you know. That's one of the things that I really, really love about Dwarf Fortress is that none of my games was the same so far. None of my fortresses was the same. There's always been either new developments on my knowledge, developments or changes in regards of the environment, which do make a huge difference, you know. And the list goes on, you know. There's just so much that you can do with this game. And every map plays and behaves a little bit differently. I love it. This is um, RimWorld was the last game that did this to me, and uh, now we're uh, we're sitting here with the OG Godfather of <laughs> RimWorld, so to say. Not that I want to say that RimWorld is a bad game or anything or inferior. No, no, it's just two different venues. I'll stick to the blocks. Thank you guys. They're just less heavy. And uh, can't we build that now out of one color? It would disturb me to have two different colors here. So for starters, I'm just going to dig one shaft downwards, just like we did there. And it's going to end here in this area. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this in the long run. We're not going to install the drowning chamber today, but I want to prepare this, uh, this shaft already because I don't want this... Um, the water supply connected to the rest of this uh, of this parkour here. This would be unprofessional. Would just open breaches uh, to places where I don't want to have breach chances. So I think we're going to have to generate the water on this level, but I'm not ready for that yet. So I'm going to wall off everything. Later, we're just going to tear down a wall because you just can uh, tear down walls with that command. But uh, we're, we're going to use that later as our water supply, but not for now. For starters, I just want to complete the parkour. Just uh, fill that thing with boulders. It's, it's better to, ha to finish one project and not to start five different projects at once. We still have that housing thing to do. You know, there's a, there's a huge influx of dwarfs and we need to take care of their needs. We also got the, the, the guild hall. I mean, these are all rather small projects, but they sum up. And if you just smack up too much work to your people, this will become a problem in the long run. And that rock is really, really annoying me. That's one ruddy, ruddy rock. This blocks the door from being locked if you need it in an emergency. And it sucks when that happens. It sucks big time. Okay then, so we gonna go for wood storage and you pick it up from that stockpile. There we go. Okay, so that's the start. This should lead eventually to a point where we're not going to have that many problems anymore. And the giant burbs are already uh, making trouble. But it looks like the, uh, the humans won that one. Yeah, the uh, giant blue jay corpses. We unlock that. I want that. Uh, here, here. Give me. Probably my butcher is going to be able to extract something out of that. It's a little bit annoying when you got to assign all these things uh, manually and tell your dwarves to pick up things manually, I know. But at the end of the day, it really pays off because this way you won't have any dwarves accidentally suiciding, you know. And that's, that is an issue. That is a big, big issue. If you have corpses open for anybody, so to say, or the uh, standard setting is that everything which dies outside there must be looted. And that's a very, very suicidal uh, uh, standard setting. That's why I disabled it. Also enlarging here these stockpiles so the food rot issue won't be there anymore because, you know, these, these meals, they would go bad and it would be sad. There's no need to. Altogether, I feel like we're not producing stuff fast enough right now. 
like there seems to be a shortage of bins, a shortage of everything. So let's see. Here we make rock blocks, and here we don't have any jobs arriving. Or craft dwarf is constantly busy. So probably we should just bring up another craft dwarf workshop. This might just relieve the problem. Okay, my good friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really, really liked this one. It's been a chill episode, but I love how this fortress is coming together, and I'm really, really curious to see how the defenses of this thing will hold. It's literally the first, the, the very, very first fortress of mine that has no access to coal in a larger scale, and to add insult to injury, we don't even have access to copper or iron here on the map. So this, uh, no, we're not hiring monster hunters yet. So this is really, really one, one nasty uh, situation to be in. So our dude is taken by a fey mood, and that's where I'm altering for today. I thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Leave me a comment down below, leave me a thumbs up if you want to make it more visible for everybody else. Also, consider subscribing, I'd be really, really delighted if you did so. So, there's also a playlist link in the description box, so if you want to watch the first episode, if you came in new to this and you started to like it, you can see the humble beginnings of this one. So, have a wonderful day, and see you next time!